When it comes to reporting and QuickBooks Online, one of the best things you can do is customize your chart of accounts and specifically your income line items to help you read your P&L report better. And if your P&L shows you exactly where your money is coming from, that your income is really clear from consulting services or design services or um, maybe a certain type of product sale, all of those things, if you can see it really just very clearly from your P&L, it will help you make better decisions as a business owner. So what I'm gonna do is in QuickBooks Online today, I'm gonna show you how to associate invoice line items with P&L line items on your, your P&L, on your profit and loss statement. So every time you create an invoice, you can get that information into your reporting in a very easy peasy kind of way, okay? So, because we're trying to make it easy for you to get really good information out of your accounting system. All right, so if that sounds interesting to you, that is what we're doing in today's video. Please make sure that you uh, subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. If you're a small business owner and you are trying to make more money, make good decisions, make good financial decisions in your business, this is the place for you. And we're in a series right now called How to Do Stuff in QuickBooks Online. And kind of to help you summarize that information, we've created a checklist. So we have a how to optimize your QuickBooks Online checklist. So you can grab that for free in the description box below so that you can make sure that you are doing all the things you need to do um, because just these little tweaks here and there will make your life so much easier. You'll, it will make your information that much more helpful to you. It will make your bookkeeping easier and just kind of improve improve the usage of the tool because if you're gonna be paying for a tool, we want you to optimize it. We want you to get all of the value out of it, okay? So go ahead and grab your copy of the checklist. Again, you can get that in the description box below. And I think it's time to go ahead and hop into QuickBooks. Today we are in the sample company again, and this company already has a few things set up that I wanted to show you guys how to do for your own business. So sometimes when I look at financial statements that I get from clients, this income line item looks like one big solid line. And maybe it's all coded to something like services income, something very generic. And you might be in this situation. So I want to show you how to break out your income into multiple different sections. This one, I'm not, I'm not in love with the way that they've ordered all of this, but what it does show you is it does show you how much income was earned from just the materials associated with the sale, the sale and then how much was associated with labor and how much was associated with design. And when we're trying to figure out how to run our businesses more efficiently, figure out what's profitable, what's not, um, you want to see your income line items broken out as much as possible. So I'm going to show you how to do that in QuickBooks Online. So I will say that this information, this is the result. The P&L is the result of the setup. And it is two different things. So one of the pieces of setup is the chart of accounts. So when you go to the chart of accounts and you scroll down, there's going to be all these income sections. So income line items here. Okay. So these are your, essentially your options of where things could be uh, classified to, if you will. So these are your classification, um, basically how you could potentially classify your income. If you want to change any of that, if you want to change the name of anything, you just go here and you click edit and you can change that. That might be if you want to rename a certain category. Maybe it doesn't make sense to what it was, like fountains and garden lighting. You might want to call fountains, lighting, and something else. I don't know. <laughs> Electrical. I don't, I don't know exactly what you might want to change that to, but you could change that and just edit the name. But if you want to add a completely new category for income, you go up here to new. And remember in my chart of accounts video, um, we go into this in more detail, but you would go income and then um, maybe service fee income, and then uh, we are going to create a new one called consulting services. So this is a landscape company, and maybe sometimes they're just called in to consult on something, but they're not actually doing any work of the actual design or the installation. So there might be some times uh, where consulting services is a way for them to get paid just for their advice. And so in this situation, we would put this under, I'm going to go ahead and put it under labor. Okay, and that's a sub account now of labor. So I'm gonna go save and close. 
All right, so that wasn't there before. I double checked to make sure there wasn't already an account set up for consultations. And so now we have a consulting line item. So remember, these are your options of where things can show up on your P&L, whatever's in your chart of accounts. So now the second thing we wanna look at is our products and services. So this is a list of everything that will show up when we create an invoice. So when we go to create an invoice, we have this product service line, and this is a subset of everything we just looked at under those products and services, okay? So this is kind of interesting because these things are associated and we can tag them to a line on the PL. So when we go to installation, it should be set up to every time this item is sold, it will show up on the PL at a rate of, you know, $50 and this. So this, this total will show up on the detail of the PL. So I'm going to cancel out of this for a second. And let's go back to these. So I just showed you the example of installation. Let's find installation here. And I'll show you the detail. Installation, edit. Okay, so installation. This is the item that was showing up on our invoice. And then here is that income account. So installation. Now, if I wanted to change this and I said, okay, we're not gonna put it there anymore. Installation is now gonna become uh, maintenance and repairs for whatever reason. You can click this little box. And this is really great if maybe you are changing a classification or you created a new, like maybe you wanted to break out something that was like, had a lot of transactions going to it, but you wanted to break them out into maybe two separate categories. Um, you can use this and it will say everything in the past that was ever coded to landscaping inst or to installation will now be updated to this income account, okay? Now we don't wanna do that because I think installation is probably the right income account for something on the invoice called installation. Um, but I just wanted to show you that that's a possibility. You can actually use this to go back and record historical transactions as well. So that can be really helpful. And you can also set up sales tax and you can um, you know, also put in cost of goods sold. So every time an income item is is um, created, a cost of goods sold can also be, um, can be recorded as well. So that can be helpful as well. But what I wanna do is I wanna set up a new service item since we just set up a new account. Remember how we set up consulting services as a new account? So now we wanna do is set up a new service line item so that when I'm going to an invoice, I can sell consulting services. So we're gonna to go to new, and then these are your options. So inventory is when you're tracking quantities, and um, I really think the best thing is to not use QuickBooks Online for inventory, but if you have a little bit of inventory, it is something that you can use, um, and it will keep track of your stock. Every time you sell something, it will reduce the stock. Um, you can also have products and things that you don't track the inventory on, and then here's a service, and then there's bundles. Okay, but we're gonna do a service, and then we're gonna do um, landscape. It doesn't have to be named the same as the uh, accounting line item. Landscape consulting. And remember, this is what the, the person is gonna see on their invoice, so landscape consulting. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and just change this income line item to consulting services. And we've never sold it before, but you know, I'm gonna say this is at a pretty high rate where installation might be a lower rate, but if I'm just offering my expertise, we're gonna do $250 an hour, okay? And we're gonna go to save and close. Now let's go sell some consulting services. <laughs> Maybe you've had somebody who said, hey, we have, we wanna do the work ourselves. We just want your advice on how to do it. So you say, great, I can offer consulting services on that. You can go ahead and create an invoice. Um, and this is just a little side tip. If you're doing any type of installation or work for somebody, there's always an opportunity to have consulting. If you are an expert at something, somebody might be willing to pay you for consulting services. So keep that in mind, all right? <laughs> um, 
let's pick a customer here. I don't know who it is, but let's say that Diego was wanting some consulting services. And the invoice date matters. Let's go ahead and make it today's date. And you can change the terms and everything that's in another video. Um, but let's go ahead and type in that new account that we just created is called Landscape Consulting. And you'll see it's already pre-populated here with the rate that we set it up as. And, you know, we could have put in a default description and stuff too, but we just didn't fill that out. But let's say he paid for five hours of Landscape Consulting. That's $1,250. And we're going to go ahead and save and send. Okay. And this is going to give us a, um, you know, a fake one, obviously, but we're going to just send and close. Okay. So it says email not sent because this is a sample company. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So now what I want to show you is I want to show you the result of that activity that we just did in the consult in the, um, in the books. So we set the date range to through to today. And this is accrual accounting because we didn't receive the cash for this income yet. So accrual means that an invoice has been sent. And looky here, see our consulting services have shown up for $1,250. If I click on this, it's going to show me that invoice that I just created for Diego. And so that is how you can customize your P&L to help you tie the invoices that you're sending to your customers to the actual reporting on your P&L. And this is where it gets really helpful because then you can click in here and you can say, oh, who, who did we have products for? Who do we do design work for? And you can go in and click it and then you can see all the names of your customers here that you did design work for, okay? So I hope that was really helpful to you guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I've seen this, you know, you can do this in lots of different ways. And um, it's really so beneficial to the business owner to see their income broken out on the different line items. And if you can just tie it directly to the invoices coming in, it will be, um, you know, you, this is this becomes an automatic process. Again, this is part of that, you know, automation of your accounting and making it easy so that you don't have to go back and move things around and do journal entries to reclassify stuff. So really, we're just trying to help you use these tools in the best way possible. That is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and we will talk to you again. And make sure that you grab the checklist to optimize your QuickBooks. Um, you can find a link to that in the description box below. We have set this up based on what we think are some really simple things that you can implement in your QuickBooks online company that will help you optimize the system and get everything out of it that you really are hoping for. Okay, you guys, well, I hope that was really helpful. I would love to hear how you change up your P&L after this. What can you do? What categories can you break things down into? I would love to hear. So if you want to leave a comment below, I love to hear that people are actually taking this advice and going and doing something with it. I did this recently with a client and everything was going into one service line item. And then when we broke it down, it gave us just a lot more information to work with. We were able to see because a certain fee was being charged every time a new client came on, we were able to see how many clients just from the P&L, how many clients we took on every single month. It was kind of a cool kind of light bulb moment that when we broke that item out, it was like, oh, this is such a great thing to see on our P&L, especially when we look at it in that month by month view. So, all right, well, I will see you guys next time and be sure to grab the checklist. It's in the description box. All right, bye.